between the Maitland Redbacks and the Central Coast Dolphins. For those of you who may not know, the Redbacks will be playing in the red and black uniform and the navy blue is that of the Central Coast Dolphins. Be a pretty interesting game, this one. Uh, somewhat of a local hunter region event. And uh, the Central Coast have been pretty strong in their juniors the last few years, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. We've got Pete, Jason Stanton, ex-New South Wales men's open player. Hoping to get back there again. Hopefully, mate. Yeah, really excited and absolute uh, honour to be joining Dean in the commentary here. The, the Central Coast team, that they set this tournament alight earlier today on the stadium game, knocking off the, the very fancied northern, uh, northern beaches. So Maitland have got a big challenge ahead of them here, Dean. Let's see how they open up. We're just in the, uh, the referee's hands at the moment, waiting for the Huda. Fantastic conditions for uh, touch. And there's the Huda. Maitland will tap off. I'll drive it down there. That was Nichols, but ball again. They go to half. They've obviously got a set play here as Nichols floats across, throws the long ball out. Sweeps around. He's gone a long, was a long sweep there for Nichols. It's in the hands of Meriton. But late pass that time and uh, an interesting, if not dynamic start from uh, Maitland. Yeah, very, very good start there. I think it was, it, it was quite solid. And one of the interesting things already we've seen is that Central Coast didn't immediately go to their substitution box, which is something where we've, we've been seeing with some of the other games. They sort of didn't mind going straight down the middle. Yeah, opportunity there. Little step back. And that was off Logan O'Brien. He gives the ball back inside to Jesse Walker. And it's just a pretty simple set, driving all the way down the field. They open up the defence there. Goes to his left, steps back right, small, drops the small pass inside. And uh, Central Coast boys on the, on the scoreboard early, 1-0. Yeah, Walker, Walker got that ball down so quickly, Dean. And, and we saw in earlier games with Walker, he's got a really good you know, dump split game, scoop game, and he's driving. And there he showed really good support play. He really has the full range of skills. It's the Redbacks now in the, into the red zone. They sweep around to the right-hand side of the field. They go long, dummy long there. That was in the hands of Jones. The defence shut it down pretty quickly. Last play, and they just shifted all the way out. to the Nothing on, so they give it wide to Bowen. But Bowen's thrown the ball away, and he's given a little bit of a piggyback here to the Central Coast. And you don't want to be giving them too many opportunities. Move the ball to the centre of the field. And like you said, Jason, unlike a lot of teams, they're not just a subsetting team where they just drive to the box and just immediately swing players on. Uh, they look to use the ball in hand. And now they'll come on at pace. And that was in the hands there. The, the drive through again. They go along to the left-hand side. Great touch there coming across. And that was uh, Burke, I think, coming across there from... Oh, sorry, my mistake. That was Cunningham who got across there. And that was really good defence that time from Maitland. Yeah, really good scramble. What we've been seeing in these 18s boys games uh, so far is that the scramble and the D across all the teams is really strong. But where the difference has been is around this midfield. And who controls that generally wins the game. And here's an opportunity for Maitland. Good set of legs there. Good pace there. And that was Hickson there. Showing a good turn of speed. Nothing really on. There's the long ball. Got him outside his defender and he put the burners on and scores. That was absolute outstanding football from Maitland. And we were, we were just talking about the midfield and they come charging through. And they perhaps unearthed a bit of a, a, a potential weakness there in Central Coast because Central Coast have looked look quite solid in all their games today, but they, they got found, found wanting on that occasion. Yeah, we used to call out a brothers out where you throw the ball long outside the defender and then get into a foot race. And here goes Central Coast now. Ella's there with the ball. He's got the ball again. Gets it down in front of Hunt. Hunt gets it across there. Ella's out the back. They go with a passive play. But good defence there from Maitland. They're going to pick up a penalty for a late pass. Solid defence that time from the Redbacks. Yeah, Maitland, Maitland scrambled quite well. So, so that uh, passive play that, that Dean's talking about, that's that outside runner rather than being up flat and hitting the hole. They actually hang back quite passively and um, don't, don't run onto the ball. And that's been proved to work quite well against some of these defences that shut down. Yeah, really good yards here from the Redbacks as they get to their sub box and they bring fresh troops on. That was Walker in that time. Now they slow it down fractionally. That's the big 10 there. I think it was Nichols, I think. Yep, Reg Nichols. Tell you what, they feed them well in the hunter. There's a lot of tall timber out there in both teams. 
and they're and they're fast too. It's I think it's I think it's one thing being, you know, you might be tall or you know different body shapes, but to have to have this ball in you know, like this skill and the long passes and the quick dives and. They really got the full the full repertoire. Yeah, very athletic both teams as they go here to the right hand side of the field. A good turn of pace that time. Good defence there. I think that was a big reg again. It'll be six to go that time. He was looking mm. to drop the ball back inside, but the hand in the in the passing lane there knocks the ball down. Yeah, Merton, Merton didn't get flustered there, did he, Dean? He just sort of he knew that he knew that the scooper had his measure, but he just just stuck with him, dived, made the touch. Like, really good composure there from Maitland. Yeah, Bowen just waiting to pick up Cunningham as he brings him in field. The ball in the hands now of Camburn. Again, Camburn from half. Dishes out to his right-hand side. They beat the first there. That was Gothard. But just a mistake there at the ruck, and now Central Coast turned over. And they look pretty composed, Central Coast, whether it's attack or defence. Yeah, the, I think Central Coast are still finding their way. They're still trying to fill out Maitland, getting getting the rhythm of the game. So Maitland uh, really got to take it to them and make make the Dolphins earn everything. Yeah, that's Ellers there. He looked dangerous early with the ball. Here he is again. Ellers here gets on the outside. Really good work that time from Walker then, and gives an easy path to the score line there for Ellers. Yeah, we've seen that play a few times today, Dean. It's sort of gaining a bit of popularity. Uh, through representative touch now, where the where the player that dumps the ball on that quick release splits really wide, and then the outside link or the player outside that comes between between the two, and that kind of creates a bit of confusion in the defence. And I think back in your day, that was a drifter, maybe. Dean, did I get that right? Yeah, that is correct. Back in my day, when Jesus played fullback for Jerusalem, yeah. yep, the drifter. <laughs> anyway, the Redbacks now they're into the red zone, attacking here. Carlson gets the dump. He gives the ball out to Jones. Jones gets it back inside there to uh, Tranda, who throws a very long pass out to the wing. They've picked up the penalty, so they'll be able to reset here, the Redbacks. But Tranda takes the touch. He gets it back off the quickie. They get the ball wide, but just on the ground there. Unfortunately, it went to the feet of Hickson, and he wasn't able to pick it up. Now the Central Coast. They'll just drive the ball forward, looking to pick up yards. Elders are out towards his sub box that time. They'll bring fresh troops on. They need to straighten the attack here. And they do that now. They drop the ball back on the inside. Good drive that time by Hunt. They release out of here from half. They go back on the inside. Good touch there. And that was Buckley nearly getting slicing through. Yeah, really good, really good comms there from the referee. You could see some of the, you know, the arms waving. I know we haven't got the referees mic'd up, but. One of the things that's quite unique to, to our games is that the three referees will work together as, as, as one unit. And there's, there's, I know it's not coming through on the feed, but they, they're always talking to each other, giving each other tips. And, you know, it's more no, often than not, they get the right result. Yeah, it's no different to how teams operate, Jason. You've got to be talking to your, your teammates left and right. Oh, oh the, it's got through there. I thought the touch had been made, but obviously Logan O'Brien has said to the referee, no, sir, I missed. And uh, we've got another touchdown there this time to Maitland. Yeah, and uh, again, like we're just we're just wrapping the referees all, and then and that was a really good example of where that could have easily, you know, had a different outcome. But the, like the referee on the sidelines probably got the comms going, check with the toucher, the controlling referee, nice and calm, you know, checks in with the player, and then we get the right result. So great referee in there. Okay, here they go again. That's Ellis and Hanson working together, and Hudson, sorry, working together. There's Ellers with the ball. Walker out of the half, back to Ellers. They throw that passive play again. Good unselfish play there. The score, I thought, with myself, I thought Walker then could have gone through and scored, but he unselfishly throws the ball long to the winger, Keesby, and they've picked him up that time on that passive play. Yeah, really good execution there, Dean. So a bit of a tip there, if, if you're like that uh, defensive winger, and, and that plays run at you, you really got to decide early. You've got to get right up and touch that link as they're catching the ball, or you've got to get off the line a bit and almost like pause and disrupt a little bit, then back away to give your time cover across. It's you really got to be really decisive to try and save that as a defender. Yeah, you definitely can't hesitate in those situations. You make your decision and go with it. A little drop play inside there from the red backs, but really well read by the defence. Last touch here coming around. They put the ball in the hands of Coburn. He tries to get it wide there to Cunningham, but the defence was equal to it. Now, Central Coast, they'll drive off their line. 
Again, they send the sweepers around the outside. That time, Walker then. A good release. Gets extra yards down the sideline through Jones. Now they bring fresh, fresh troops on. And that was Truscott Jones driving the ball in. Out they come of half. That was Hunt there. He taps on the inside, steps back again, tries to get the ball back there to post. But the ball goes to ground, and now it'll be the Redbacks who will drive down. They're moving the wards to their box. Yeah, just just on some of those attacking sequences we've seen, Dean. I'd back. You know, I think I think it's interesting just to reflect a little bit. Like these are things that you would have been coaching when you coached Australia and and whatnot. But now we're seeing it at the club level. We're seeing these advanced plays. Oh, great ball out wide there. That's a fantastic touchdown to the Redbacks. Hickling that time off a very flat pass. Cuts the middle player out and hits the link. Running a really good line into that hole. And all of a sudden, we've got the Maitland boys up three touchdowns to two against what we thought might have been the more fancied Central Coast team. Yeah, I definitely uh, was guilty of thinking this was going to be a one-sided contest. But Maitland have showed... They've got ability. They're here to play. And every time Central Coast lose a bit of a focus or they're 1% off, Maitland's taking full advantage. And I agree with your earlier comment too. Uh, the level of coaching, especially at the 18s and 16s levels, has gone very much up a gear. Uh, and some of the best coaches at different clubs are now taking on these players. So they come into their Opens program already developed and ready to make a mark when they get into the Opens level. Great long ball there for the Central Coast. They get the ball out wide, and that was a fantastic pass, 25 metres plus from Jones, and they picked the, cor- the touchdown up in the corner. Yeah, that's a nice that nice hit back from Central Coast. The um, when, when, when we talk about some of those plays, you've got like a two-man play, which would be like a quick release or a quickie. You've got a three-man play, which might be a bump and run or a sweeper. These, these plays that you're referring to with the passive out the back and up, they're four-man plays, and that traditionally would be more of an elite thing that you would have coached at Australia. But now, as, as we're seeing all the way down through the juniors, that there's just a skill level in touch football has gone another gear. And plus the amount of content that the coaches are able to access as Maitland looked to score there, but the amount of content they are able to, um, to access through the... Uh, through the networks now with the, the social media and also on YouTube and that coaches are able to take all that information in and now adapt their game plans. So as Central Coast make a breakdown here, it's Ellers again. Really good defence coming across from Jones. Ellers with the ball. He's going off his left and his right. He dumps the ball. They give it back and Walker comes back to the left. He goes, drops it back inside to Ellers. And they yeah. picked up a penalty, so... Now they're going to have six touches in the red zone. Yeah, they had him in a bit of trouble. They probably would have liked to see Walker actually go at the line a bit more, but they still got another chance here. Yeah, Ella is really prominent in this set of play. Him and, Wa- and Walker working together in the middle of the field. That's Walker then coming around to the right. They give it to him now. He releases straight away. A long ball out wide. And that was great play from the Central Coast boys. Really well set up. And they now have jumped out to a five touchdown to three lead. Yeah, very strong there from Central Coast down there, down their right side there, and and with the with with that strong coaching you were talking about earlier, Dean. The, I think I think one of the tips if you're maybe coaching some of the younger teams is you want to get your 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 drive right. You want to get your two and three man plays right. You don't want to go straight to a a four man sweeper passive play. You know when yeah. you're starting off, you've got to get the building blocks right. And because the standard's so high here, sometimes we get a bit excited and we want to we want to go to the. Uh, to, the, to uh, the big play a bit early in our coaching, maybe. Yeah, if you want to build a double-storey house and you don't want to put it on any foundation, it's not going to last very long. And that's what Jason's talking about. You need the skill sets and then build the foundations first as Maitland nearly sliced through there. Unlucky that time, Camborne tried to get through. Uh, just a little bit of frustration there and gives the penalty away, unfortunately, but it was a good attempt to get through. Is through the dummy and sliced through the line. The, the touch was made by the Central Coast team. And again, some composure by Central Coast. They just drive the ball down now on the left-hand side of the field. They're playing what's in front of them. Some great lead, speed there shown by Reece, Riley Jones. Mm-hmm. I love seeing that ball movement around the midfield, Dean, rather than just charging off to the sub box. I love seeing that extra pass and really you know, charging over that halfway line. Here they go again, slicing through this time. They get it wide, but the pass just goes to ground. That was Buckley trying to get through. I agree with you, Jason. As long as you're giving the ball to somebody who's in a better position, 
not just passing for the sake of passing. Always dish the ball off to somebody who's in a better position for that second and third phase play. Maitland now coming off their own line, looking to get towards the box. Good play there that time by the Maitland boys. They're driving it around the right-hand side of the field. That's in the hands of Carlson. They release long, they release the ball long, and it's got out the side to the six. The Annals arc, but um, good defence there from the wing position. Liam Buckley, that was, I think. Drops the ball back inside. A little bit disjointed here, but again, so they're just shifting it off to someone to get in a better position to open up the field, but that whole set was disjointed and they've turned the ball over in their own half. Yeah, you can give, you can give credit to Carlson for that. He was up and spoiling and he showed so much effort running across the field as the Central Coast were linking the passes. He just kept going at him, going at him, and he forced the error almost on his own. So great work, Carlson. Now he gets a chance with the ball. There he is. He rolls the ball this time to Trainer. Trainer gives it back to Carlson. They're sending Gothard around to the right. They give it to him. as a quick release back. They look to get the ball down. That's interesting. I think the ball's down. So there's the referee and Maitland back into the game. Five touchdowns to four. Yeah, Maitland just just keep coming and they just keep responding to what Central Coast throw at him. And, and not just for this game. This is a real, real booster for Maitland's whole campaign because if they can bring this sort of level of play to all their games, then they're going to be featuring, in, featuring on finals day as well. It's been entertaining stuff from both teams and the game's still in the balance. Central Coast now, and that's Ellis, who's had a really sharp game. He gets down now in front of Post. Post gives it back to Ellis and yeah, the referees called that correctly. The forward pass in the ruck. Yeah, they're right on to it. These, these three referees are really working well together and I like one of the things, too, that I'm seeing with the referees is that it's a nice, swift, early call from the comms. They're not having to slow it down and talk about it. They're straight into it. Yeah, that was forward, bang, bang, and then we get back to the action. And they're working well, as is right Maitland here, as they drive the ball forward. In the hands of the big 21, Hickling. They go long again, but well read defensively that time. A lot coming off Camborne here. Camborne at half, gives it back this time. To Lilliman, but the referee's found an infringement at the ruck, and it'll be a change over here to the Central Coast. Yeah, we often we often talk a bit about the rhythm or the tempo in games, Dean, and we had some questions coming through about the having no half time in this format, which is unique to touch, and and how that sort of limits, I guess, that like the coach can't really say let's try this different, or you know can't settle the team down. You've got to coach a bit on the run, and that's why I think it's actually and that's really good play there. The referees have got that ball down, and that's Jesse Walker going in for another touchdown for the Central Coast. I agree with you, Jason, but I think it's actually really good from a developmental perspective for coaches because you have to have to learn to coach on the run. Mm. So making adjustments while the game is playing, and some of the best coaches in the game, some of the most elite coaches will go into... Um, like an NTL or an interstate match or an international match even where you are playing two halves and have a set game plan but within the first five or ten minutes you know you've got to change that game plan up and you've got to make, send those instructions in so it's a really good developmental phase for coaches to be able to coach at this level in this type of format as Maitland snilly snick through there but good defence once again from the Central Coast yeah, so they're really, they're really good skills to have as a coach. So it's something I guess we need to embrace and really, really take on board and identify that as a unique skill to actually, you know, watch the game, encourage the players, but also look for ways we can influence it with, you know, they're defending this way, let's try that, that sort of thing, which, again, is on the fly. You don't get the half time. Yep. And a lot of coaches think that once the game started, well, I've given them the, the game plan and it's really up to the boys or the girls out there. And, but they do still have the opportunity to have an influence in that game by the information they're giving to their teams as they come off for substitutions, by changing the game plans up if they need to. And it could be as simple as just changing your, your rotations, whether you're playing in pods or whether you're playing uh, man, man on man substitutions. Just changing those rotations around could be a way of influencing the game. Yeah, definitely. Again, it's something that's unique and pretty awesome with touch footy is that you don't have the coach in the box, you know, on a two-way. I think that's pulled down there. Yeah, I reckon he slid underneath from where we are, but the referees are a lot closer. No, they've said the, the touch was made, but they are penalising for not moving forward. 
So Maitland now, they're going to have six touches on the Central Coast line. And yeah, they need to pull one back here, Dean. They've got to throw everything at them. Nicholas with the ball there, he gets it again. He goes trying to go underneath, but good defence there, Nicholas. Didn't quite get underneath. He's a very tall, tall lad. Yeah, that was, that was super impressive to get down that low so quickly too. They come down around the left, but they dummy and go back right. Just held up there. They're going to have to reset here again. The ball in the hands now of Merton. Nichols with the ball. He gives it off there. An early sweep. Merton's with him down with the ball. Nichols on the sweep. And this time, just a good little prop and step back off his left-hand foot. And Nichols gets the uh, meat pie. Yeah, what, what, what was super interesting there, Dean, is that if you're, if you're at home, you watch it on replays, you'll see the players off the ball actually pull width, which actually caught the eye of the defenders, which opened it up for the dive. Sometimes uh, the support players will ball watch a bit, but it's actually really advantageous to, to break off the ball and get the defenders, you know, almost distracted. And Maitland did that to perfection on that occasion. Yeah, and for a tall lad, really good agility to be able to get around there, prop and step back off his left. And here's Ellis, who's been really dangerous all day. He can go off his left and his right. Catches out the defence there, gets the penalty. They're really going to have to squeeze up on him when he has the ball because he can go off both feet. He gets the ball then again off the quickie, goes, look to prop and go back inside, but good defence that time from Camborne. Ellers with the ball. Gets it down in front of Hunt. Hunt gives it back to Ellers, and they're really involving him down here now. Walking it out there, walking it on behalf. He gives it to Ellers. Just slowing the play down. Camborne comes out and makes the touch. Off the ground to Ellers. He looks to go long, then decides to go short. Nothing was on, and a changeover occurs. And now Maitland, good defensive set there. Yeah, that was really strong. It was particularly impressive that they didn't really like rush in on the ball carrier, or sometimes we say bite in. They didn't really rush in. They just were nice and calm, almost on the spot, uh, or hedging. Just sort of let the play unfold in front of them. So that was that was really good to see from Maitland. With the ball again now, Maitland. They're at halfway. The ball in the hands of Trainer. Trainer gets it down. It was Carlson gives it back to Trainer. He gives it back to Carlson. They get it down in front of Hickling. Hickling just gets caught up in the ruck. Carlson there working with Trainer. He gets it back, but this time the ball's gone forward. Yeah. Now Central Coast again. Yeah, a bit of a shame there with the um, with with that turnover because they've really got to control the ball and keep giving it to Central Coast on their own try line to to see if they can get back in this one. Here they come again. They're sweeping around. Out of half, they come to the left hand side of the field. It was Jesse Walker trying to take off on the defence that time, but the defence was equal to it. Now Maitland. Again, they're a team that does like to come to their box, but nice little dummy there from uh, Carlson. Gets at the defence a little bit disjointed as they come on at pace now. Merton with the ball. He'll be looking for Nick now. Nichols wants to slow it down. He gets to half now. Gives it back to Merton. Mer Camborn, sorry. Camborn gives it back to Nichols. He drives into the defensive line. They come back to the right-hand side of the field. There's no touch been made. They're trying to get someone out. Oh, the ball's down. The referee. There's going to be a That's conversation fine. here. He's That's saying the ball down. That's a great call. That's a great yep. call. There's a lot of noise there. Um, a, a lot of defenders yelling, calling touches with players that didn't have the ball. So that was that was exceptional piece of um, refereeing there from, from the two. I haven't got the name, sorry, but yeah, that was a great call. And again, there was a quick conversation about what the sideline referee had seen. He was happy and they, uh, they have awarded the touchdown. Central Coast now in the hands of Walkerton. He gets it back to Ellis. Ellis is down. He's got the ball back in his hands again. Looks to drive in props. Maitland defence are looking tight there. They get the ball long. Really smart play set up there. They slowed the ball down in the middle of the field. Bought the runners in, went behind his back to Ellers, and it's just an easy release to the wing. And the Central Coast hit the front. Yeah, if you give Central Coast possession like, like they've been getting, they really execute some of those set plays really well. And, you know, ni nice and polished. So you really got to try and starve them a ball because they look so strong when they get to your try line. Maitland now, they'll, they'll look to hit back here. Camborne, he's got the ball out here into the hands of Lilliman. Lilliman gets it down in front of Hickling. Hickling goes now long. 
Camborn's going to go from half this time. He goes out to the left-hand side of the field. He's on the outside of his player, but they shut it down pretty well, Central Coast. Yeah, a, a quick note on the substitution, just a bit of touch terminology. So it's, it's unlimited interchange. So you'll see the players running on and off, you know, uh, as many times as they want, essentially. And then you can either just substitute like sort of like randomly like one in one off or you could do the pod that Dean mentioned where you'll be almost clustering you'll be subbing on with a partner or you've got that rotation that he was talking about where you come on and off with your buddy so there's a few different ways to unpack it but the main thing to get so it's unlimited interchange yeah just over aggressive in the touch now that's given central coast another set of six that's unfortunate for Maitland because the ball had gone to ground so it's in the hands of Walker he gets it down he gets it back from the ground it's Walker and O'Brien in the middle of the field. O'Brien will be half. O'Brien with the ball. Walker at half. He picks up Walker and going through. And oh, a little, little split play bringing Walker and through the middle of the ruck. And there's full time in what's been. Oh, he's got to be offside. And good to, again, once again, good communication between the referees. He was nearly as far offside as I tried to use to be. <laughs> I was about to, I was imagining myself as him and said, what? I'm on, what? What's the problem? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Last throw bad. of the dice here for Maitland. They'll have to throw it around. They've gone wide. They drop it back inside. It, quick hands through. It's in Camborn's hand. He dummies it back in the inside. And, but really good defence to shut it down from Central Coast. That was a really entertaining game. Central Coast get the chocolates over Maitland, but uh, Maitland certainly not disgraced. Yeah, Maitland made Central Coast work really hard for that, probably harder than what they wanted to. And I'm, I'm interested to track Maitland now throughout the tournament because I, I saw some really good things from them and I don't see any reason why they can't get, the, get that drive a little bit stronger through the midfield and actually be there and featuring on finals day. We'll be back here shortly at the New South Wales Touch Association Northern Conference of the Junior State Cup. Stay tuned and we'll see you soon.